Hey guys, Isaiah here. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different with today's video. We won't be jumping on the charts. As mentioned previously, I am going to be going moving away from doing the technicals on YouTube and just keeping that for the mentorship moving forward. I will be posting trade updates every now and then, as well as recaps as to how challenges go, how funded accounts go and everything like that. But the majority of this channel now will no longer be allocated to uh, doing technical analysis as I will be saving that content for the community. So I will also ask that you guys let me know exactly what sort of content that you'd wanna see, whether it's more day in the life sort of things, more regarding funding challenges, trading psychology, financial fundamentals, gym videos, whatever it is that you're looking to see here on the channel, please do let me know and I'll take that into consideration and hopefully deliver to you guys. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about the six things that I wish I knew six years ago when I started trading. So before we get started, I thought I'd give you a quick recap as to how I was even introduced to trading. So as just mentioned, it was about six years ago, just over that now. And it was actually through a couple of friends through the gym. Uh, they were working with a company, which I won't name, and it was basically a multi-level marketing sort of scheme where they wanted me to join up and join with their broker. And then however many people you get to join and use the broker, you would get a sort of commission. So it was sort of like a pyramid scheme. Uh, so unfortunately not the best introduction to Forex, but I'm glad because it was actually what led me to understand what is Forex trading and what the foreign exchange market was. As at the time, I was talking to them more so about stocks because I was working in financial planning at that time. I have actually worked in financial planning industry for five years and I was introducing them to stocks. They were telling me about Forex trading, but as well, there was that sort of hidden agenda in the sense that if I was to sign up with their broker, they would make a commission and then they wanted me to do the same with other people. I think a lot of the times today, you're either introduced to Forex through that or signal groups, or just someone on Instagram flaunting Lambos and Rolexes trying to get you to join their community or whatever it is like that. And unfortunately, that is what works. That's what gets people attracted to it. But what it does is it builds a lot of, it builds false expectations as to what you can expect from the Forex market. The first thing I say in my course is that you won't be a millionaire within the next 12 months. This is something that you do need to dedicate a lot of time and effort to. And more so than just learning the content, it's actually building the mindset, having the discipline and going through making sure that you're doing this every single day, or not every single day, at least five days a week, so that you can build the strategy, build the system and or follow a system that's already been built and continue to execute it within the market. So that's sort of how I got introduced to it. I did then join a free community, which was good in the time, uh, very much support and resistance, break and retest sort of trading. And it was a bit limited. Uh, so what I did from that point then is I went to the mentor of that mentor, so the free mentor, I found out who taught him and I paid and did a 12 week mentorship with that mentor there. And that was really good. Uh, so I did learn a lot from there. I was actually profitable within six to nine months of using that support and resistance sort of trading, but it wasn't the style of trading that I was interested in. Uh, I will do another video more so on that. But I mean, I was marking up 16 different pairs. I'd enter on the one hour time frame. I'd hold trades for three to four days. I'd wake up in the middle of the night to check my phone to see whether I'd made profit or lost money. I would sometimes have dreams that my actual trade had hit take profit, wake up and it would actually be a stop loss. And it was kind of frustrating. Um, it wasn't sort of the lifestyle I wanted to lead. I was up till 4 a.m. because I wanted to trade the New York market. I'd sleep until noon. It was just terrible. So everything that I've created here with Millennial Wealth Group is to be use trading around your life already, not to shift your life to, to fit trading, but to find a trading style and a session that fits within your lifestyle. So the first tip that I would have for someone is to have a defined edge. Now, what does that mean? So it's to have a strategy or to follow a strategy that has proven to work, that you can backtest yourself and see that it works and to actually know what to do in what order. So at the time when I was trading support and resistance, I sort of knew what to look for. It was just draw a trend line. Once price breaks above it, comes back to retest it, then you press buy or the same sort of scenario in reverse for a sell. But it wasn't sort of if this, then that. It was just mark up these trend lines, which again, were quite discretionary in how you could draw them sometimes. Sometimes it was to the body of the candle. Sometimes it was to the wick. There was a lot of discretion, okay? Discretion is not something good to have in your trading. The more mechanical you can be, the better. So the first thing to do is to have a defined edge. So know exactly what to do in what order, whether you're gonna use top down analysis like we do here. So you start off on the weekly, go down to the daily, go down to the four hour, go down to the 15 minute, and then enter on the lower time frames. Or if you don't wanna do that, you don't have to. A lot of people just pick one time frame, do all their analysis on that one time frame, and enter on that one time frame, potentially the 15 minute or the one hour. 
It depends on, again, what sort of strategy and what sort of style you want your trading to be. But personally, I think the top-down approach works well for us. Uh, so, and the members of the community could, could also back that up. So first thing is to have a defined edge. And the second thing, which follows on from that, is to follow a mechanical approach. Now, what does that mean? So the Millennial Wealth Group strategy is built around 15 different flowcharts, and there is literally zero discretion. Now, the only times I've personally used discretion is when going for funding challenges. So I do base our setups from a two-star setup all the way to a five-star setup. And as tra real trading doesn't have any timeframes, but funding challenges do, sometimes you do need to wait for those higher probability setups because you do have that time limit on FTMO or MFF or whatever other um, prop firm you're going to use. So because there is that time limit there, sometimes you do need to be a little bit more selective. However, in a normal trading sort of environment, you can just take every single valid setup that fits the rules, as sometimes those two-star setups are the ones that work, and so those five-star setups sometimes also go against us. So the second thing to do would be to follow a mechanical system. So that as well should have a probabilistic edge over time, which ties in with the first tip, so that you know all that you need to do is build the psychology to understand that sometimes there is going to be losing streaks but because you have this edge over time over a large enough sample size of trades you will be successful and the third tip i have to, for you would be to journal now with journaling i mean journaling your trades but also journaling your emotions so i personally have used three different ones here so this one here this is the clear habit journal by james clear the author of atomic habits now none of this is sponsored i'm not receiving any payments or anything for doing this this is just me reviewing the personal journals i've used then I have the one that I'm currently using, which is the Daily Stoic Journal, which is Ryan Holiday. And then there's also the High Performance Planner, which is by Brendan Bouchard. I think, I hope I said his name right. Now they differ in how long they take to do and what they actually provide you with. This one's the most intense sort of one. Uh, so this one here has 10 morning questions, the morning meditation. And then, yeah, so there's 10 of them there. I'll just see if there's a blank page to show you guys. I'm pretty sure I used up all of this one. Yeah, this is fully used up, but just as a quick one, um, that's what it looks like. You've got the morning meditation, which is 10 questions. Then there's today's top three goals and priorities, tasks that must be done, and persons I need to connect or lead with today. Then there's also six evening journal questions. Then you also score your day in six different categories, being clarity, productivity, energy, influence, necessity, and courage. So give yourself a rating out of five for all six of those aspects. And then you can look at the ones where you're lacking and potentially just as assign more time to those categories so that you can be a holistic trader. So this one takes up quite a bit of time. So if you are looking to use this, I think it's a great tool. But if you aren't currently journaling, the easiest one to sort of begin the habit with, with would be the daily stoic journal. So inside here, I'll just open up to a blank page. There's just a morning reflection and an evening reflection. So hopefully you can see that there. And it's simply just one question. It's one question to start your day and one question to end your day. And you don't have to answer that question. If there's just something else on your mind, you can just be free to write whatever it is that you feel like writing on that day. So I do both. Sometimes there's nothing really on the front of my mind and I'll just answer one of the questions provided within here. Now as well with this, how it works is each week has a theme and then the questions are based around that theme for the week. So you read a small excerpt from the Stoic, such as Marcus Aurelius or Seneca, and then you actually apply those to your life. And so you can answer the questions there, or if there's just something that you wanted to get off your chest or get off your head, then you can just freely write whatever it is that you wish to write. So this one here, I'd recommend if you are new to journaling, this is the best one to use personally, I believe. Just because it's only one question, it's not a big commitment. It'll only take you three or four minutes in the morning and three and four minutes at night. Whereas the high performance planner is more of a 10 to 15 minute sort of thing each time. And then of course there is the clear habit journal. Now this one's probably, uh, it's got the most functionality. So there's places in the back as a habit tracker so you can manually tick off all your habits there if that's something you like to do. It is a bullet journal. So in the middle it's all just bullets and then you can draw crosses across the board to divide the page into squares or rectangles. Then there's also things at the front which you would do as a one line per day which is sort of similar to that stoic journal one where you just write one line in the morning. And then there's also some toolkits at the back to use as well, if that interests you. Now you can also get this as a package with Atomic Habits. Again, not sponsored. I'm not gonna have any affiliate links for this one. Maybe not just yet. Um, but this is also a really good one to use. But if you're new to journaling, I suggest to use the Daily Stoic Journal. If you have already built the habit, then potentially something like the High Performance Panel would be best. It gives you a lot more functionality than just that little one paragraph. 
So that's in terms of that sort of journaling, but then you also have to journal your trades. So I will do a separate video on that as well as to how I use Notion to journal my trades. And I go through there and I put a screenshot of the four hour, 15 minute, one minute. And there's also a mental, uh, like a, sorry, a checklist in terms of the psychology. Like how, you, how were you feeling before you took the trade? How are you feeling when you were in the trade and out of the trade? If you would have taken the trade on a million dollar account, a seven finger account, there's a few other things that I've built in there so that you can go back and have a look at your history. And it's really good too, because then you can actually analyze your data. You can see which months work best for your strategy, which months maybe you should not potentially sit out, but just maybe decrease your risk or not take every valid setup or anything like that, as there is going to be some sort of correlation between the months and market uh, sort of uh, conditions and the strategy overall. So journaling your trades and journaling your emotion is another very, very important thing that you all must. Now, number four is your identity. And what I mean by that is to not purely identify it as a trader. Now, this is something which is really important. Uh, so this is something I've personally struggled with in the past as when you're learning to trade or when you're beginning to trade, it can be really wholesome and wholly encompassing your whole sort of life. And you can base everything that you do from the beginning of when you wake up to when you go to sleep in the journey or in the uh, challenge of becoming a funded trader or a full-time trader. Now, the issue with that is when you solely identify as a trader, every time you make a trading mistake or if you take a loss, that you feel that personally. You feel it as an individual that you are maybe not worthy or you lose confidence because when you purely only identify as a trader and then your trading is going sour, then your whole day, week, month can go sour. So it's important to ensure that you understand that you are an individual and that trading is something that you do. You are not just a trader. You are a trader that is an aspect of you, but you are not solely just a trader because if that is the case and you leave out the other aspects of your life, I don't want to say I guarantee, but if you're not paying attention to other things, your mental health, your physical health, journaling, doing all those other good things and building positive habits, which is the next one, then your career as a trader may be short lived. So it's important to identify, yes, trading is something that I do, but it is not the whole of what I do. It is not the whole of me as an individual. You are more than just a trader. Trading is something that you do to earn money. Money should be used as a resource just to buy and afford the things you want to do when you want to do them, but we shouldn't. I believe just have a goal of amassing a massive sums of money. To my knowledge, there's only one person who cares about money in that way. And that's Warren Buffett. And how we know that is because he never spends his money. Whereas most other people that earn money, they use it as a resource to buy the things that they want to buy. Nice cars, Lambos, Porsches, whatever it is you're into, nice watches, nice homes. So money is a resource. Trading is something we do to increase that resource, but we are not solely a trader. When we take a loss, that's not about us as a human being. That is the fact that the market has a probabilistic edge over time and that we should never base ourselves uh, base ourselves off our trading and that with our trading, we should never base our performance as a trader off one week or one month. A minimum of 50 trades is what I suggest that you look at your performance over the last 50 trades. If they're positive, then I say that you are a good trader. So never base yourself just off the fact that you're a trader and even further, never base your trading off of a small sample size. Look to at least 50 to 100 trades to base your performance off of that. And tip number five would be to build positive habits. Now this has been an absolute game changer for me. And I can actually remember when this started, it would have been three or four years ago now. Um, and I am 27, so I am actually acknowledging this here that there was a period of time three to four years ago where I wasn't making my bed every morning. And obviously that's something that I used to look at and say, come on, man, like, how can you not make your bed every morning when you get up and make your bed? I felt that like sometimes I would just be lazy or whatever it is. I'm sure there's people out there watching this that are also currently not making their bed. But what I just started doing was I had a little whiteboard, which my girlfriend bought for me. Thanks, Ash. And she bought me that whiteboard. It's half, half of the whiteboard is a vision board. So I've got some things up there currently. I'm looking at it just over there. And the other half is a whiteboard. I do have another much larger whiteboard here and I'll go through that in more detail later. But with that small sort of whiteboard, all I would write on there is to make my bed every day. And I would tick it every time that I made my bed. And I'd look at the end of the week and make sure that it was seven ticks there, hopefully. At the beginning, obviously it wasn't seven every time, four or five, six. Then it got to the point where it was every single day I was making my bed. And then I just started adding on more and more and more daily tasks since then. So today I now track, I believe it's 16 or 17 daily tasks. And I have made a previous video, which I'll leave a link to above, which is how I use my notion board to actually do all of that. I've got tasks that I need to do daily tasks that I need to do weekly tasks that I do fortnightly as well as monthly. 
personal ones, business goals, everything like that. I use Notion and personally now what I've done is every single time that I've completed that week, I actually rate myself as to how I believe my performance was, whether it was uh, acceptable, unacceptable, I was content with it or whether it was an excellent week. I do that personally and I do that for the business as well. And I've got that all the way back since August last year. And I can go back to any one week, see exactly what I'd completed that week, what I missed. And I use that to see what I need to work more on in the following weeks as well. So building positive habits is a massive, massive thing. If you're not currently tracking any habits, I would suggest you just start with one, two or three, something really small, whether it's journaling, for example, so you can add on two there, you can start journaling and you can start building positive habits, journaling your trades, whatever it is that you wanna do, walking, going for a 10 minute walk every day if you don't currently exercise, 5,000 steps, something really small that you can commit to and continue to accomplish day in and day out. As when you start off with something really large, your brain can sometimes be like, hey, this is way too much, and it will sort of make excuses for you to not do it. So start off with something that is really, really small and bite-sized, which you can accomplish. And then once you see that you're continuously doing them week in, week out, I would suggest if you're completing a task now for four weeks consistently, then add a new task. And something else you could do is look at the bad habits that you're currently doing, whether it be spending too much time on social media, watching things you shouldn't be watching, whatever it is, you should also look to decrease a bad habit or remove a bad habit. So have one positive habit to increase or start doing and have one negative habit to decrease or stop doing. So that's tip number five. And lastly, tip number six is income goals. Now, a lot of people out there looking at trading, they're like, yeah, I just wanna be a millionaire, I wanna be a billionaire, I wanna be the next billionaire on the Forbes list, whatever it might be, all right? I just challenge you to ask yourself why. Why is it that you wanna be that a billionaire or a millionaire, or whatever it is? A lot of the times what you'll find is that these things that we set as goals, they're for, to fulfill a void that we perceive missing in our childhood or in our early teens. Now, this is something that I've worked with with Pat Bailooney. If you haven't seen his content, I will be posting a link to it here. And there is actually a code in the description of this video if you did want to do his 12-week challenge, which I've personally completed and found very transformative for a discount code there, which is an affiliate link. So that is something that you need to look at. So if it is, if you have a goal which is absurd or maybe even not an absurd goal, but you want to be a millionaire, I just challenge you to ask yourself why. Was it because that in your childhood you perceived things to be missing or that you came from a lower socioeconomic status and that this is a void that you're trying to fulfill? Or is it simply just that, that you want to live a more lavish lifestyle or provide for your family, which is all well and good and that's definitely one of my goals too. But what I'm sort of leaning towards here is that you should have a clear and defined income goal and know what your monthly expenses are, know how much you should be making from trading and potentially if you are currently working another job, See if you can use that income to cover your base needs and then have trading to be something which is to the side where you can use that money to invest in further things or to build up a more personal account there so that you can use trading to add on to what you're currently earning from your job. All of this sort of thing as well is going to be covered off in the Financial Fundamental course, which I'll be releasing a little bit later in the year. And I have also built this based on the principles that I've learned through financial planning. Now, this is going to only be general advice. I cannot give you personal financial advice as I'm no longer licensed to do that as I'm now just in the Forex space and not working in financial planning. But I can give you general advice as to cash flow, superannuation for Australians, insurances, and how to manage your day-to-day uh, -day expenses sort of thing, building budgets and everything like that. So the last one there would be know what your income goals are. Rather than just saying, I want to earn 10 million a year, I want to earn 25 million a year, look at actually the things that you want to buy. A McLaren 720S, a house by the beach, whatever it is, quantify how much that costs, work out how much you need to earn after tax to afford those things, and then actually have a realistic and specific goal there. That will make your brain understand, hey, this is important to him or her, and know exactly, build a step-by-step -step approach as to how you're going to achieve that. How much do you need to earn in the next 12 months? How much do you need to have in savings in the next three to five years to buy the house? Whatever it is that you're looking to do, just have a clear and defined goal, and then an actions plan as to how you will achieve that. Rather than just saying, hey man, I want to be a millionaire, look at exactly what it is you want to do, how much it will cost you to do that, and then build a plan as to earn that money there. So those are six things that I would recommend that you do if you aren't doing already. If you've liked this video, please do leave a like, a comment, and if you're not currently subscribed, 
if you would subscribe, that would be great. It'll just mean that I can continue to provide you with more content like this. If you've liked this sort of content, please do let me know. And also let me know what you'd like to see more of in the future. So I am gonna be doing a lot more of these sort of style videos. I will be still doing some chart videos every now and then. It's just not gonna be every week. So thanks guys for watching if you've made it this far. I appreciate you all and I hope that you enjoy the rest of your week and I look forward to speaking to you all next week.